Logo lovers, Crystal here with Blue Cactus Dairy Goats and today we are going to open another cheese because for Thanksgiving we are making homemade mac and cheese. So the cheese I'm going to open is one of our Colby's. It's the last Colby that we actually had in the cave and if you guys watched for the last one, um, the last cheese reveal, we opened a Colby as well but it was one that was not as aged as this one. This one here is about four and a half months old um, the reason I wanted to let this one sit a little bit longer is just to get the different perspectives on how the cheese tastes, the Colby cheese tastes, with the different age steps. So, month two, which our Colby cheese that we opened last time was two months old, and it was absolutely perfect and delicious. That being said, it was the third attempt at my Colby, so <clears throat> we will see how this one turns out. And if you can come in closer, this one I actually... If you see those lines, you can see it through the uh, through the wax, those lines there. I put it on directly on uh, a metal drying rack, which apparently is a big no-no. It doesn't affect the taste, but it affects the prettiness, which bothers me. So either way, don't do that, guys. So I, I did that, and I didn't have those little plastic cheese mats that you guys have seen me have. So now I put the cheese mat on that actual metal drying rack before you put the cheese directly on it. It just, it just changes the color of it. But again, it doesn't affect the taste. So we're going to open this bad boy and hopefully it's going to be delicious like all the others have been. Alright, so let's cut this open and see how good it is. Feels a little bit tough. Ooh. Okay, it's looking dry, guys, if you can see that come up. Ooh. Not too dry, that's pretty. Okay, let's smell it. it. Smells good and sharp. Let's see. Oh, the wax doesn't want to come off too easy. Doesn't seem to have as oily as a base as the others have. It's kind of like an oil barrier between the wax and the cheese. But this one doesn't seem to have that. Come on. Okay. Alright. So again, you guys, it looked a lot darker through <clears throat> through the wax actually, but that's the discoloration that putting it directly on a wire drying rack will create. So let me just clean off that knife here. Here we go. Oh. That wasn't that serious, but it actually feels texture wise kind of creamy, but it looks a little bit dry when you break it, and it doesn't have as much give, kind of hardly, not much at all, but it's got a little, which I've been testing, and the ones that typically, the ones that have like a lot of give there when you push in on them, they're the ones that are melting. So, let's taste it. That's really, really good. That's very sharp. It still has, has a creamy, creamy effect to it. 
I don't know that it'll melt. Like the stringy melt. But th that's delicious, you guys. That's really good. I just love goat's milk cheese. Just, gosh, you guys start making it. Um, but anyway, I'm not too worried about it not melting because I'm going to be making, um, you know, a cream sauce for, for the macaroni and cheese I'll be making. So, I'm going to try it, camera boy. It's pretty, though. Look at it. So let's check out this break. It's got kind of a hard break there. That's good stuff, though. Here, camera boy. You always make it perfect. <laughs> You're so cute. That is good. And that is going to make an amazing mac and cheese. Mmm. So, another Colby. Like, I'm not kidding you guys. You cannot beat the taste of these cheeses. Like, even, I get really excited when they melt, which is what I'm aiming for, of course. But even when they don't, I mean, gosh, it is not a loss at all. And this might melt. But even if it doesn't, like, man, it's good. And again, it's going to be perfect for our mac and cheese. So, another success. Whether it melts or not, delicious. You guys, make some your goat milk hard cheese. It's so amazing and rewarding. Good deal. So, let's see how it grates. Beautiful. So, just before we get started, because I always do, I'm going to see if it melts in the little pan. Look at that. Ah. Alright. Just a little bit, just to see. You guys, it's gonna melt. Woo! Oh, yeah. It's a melter. Awesome. It's a melter. Awesome. Okay, good deal. That's what we like to see. Nice. Okay, I'm not going to burn my mouth with that just yet. So the verdict on Colby at four and a half months old aged. Love that it's sharper. I'm big on the sharp cheese, and it has a really amazing sharpness. So, and it's it's melting, so I'm good with that too. I love the melters, um, so I like it. I think it turned out really well. Awesome, really happy with it. It's gonna make an amazing, amazing mac and cheese. All right, so like I told you guys, I know that macaroni and cheese isn't your typical Thanksgiving meal. Or, or side dish, if you will. But my oldest daughter, Alexa, loves her mama's mac and cheese. So I thought, well, of course, if you're asking for it, I'm going to make it for you. And I can't not show you guys the cheese because you guys have been with me the whole time as, as we've been making it and learning with it. So may as well show you the mac and cheese that I make. It is homemade. So what we're going to use, and, and it has different variations just depending on how I'm feeling, but kind of the same, the same base, if you will. 
but I'm going to use, um, for, for this particular one, I'm going to use some Anaheims, just some little Anaheims. I'm going to use an onion and some of our garlic. And as well, I'm going to cut up this ham steak. So, for starters, obviously, I'm going to get the macaroni noodles cooking. Now, these are the larger size. Um, whatever noodle you guys prefer is, is perfectly fine. So, sometimes I'll actually use the penne. Um, that's a really good noodle to use as well. We're going to get this going. Hopefully, I don't... Oh, now that worked out well. Alright. Probably won't need this whole bag. It's a lot, and they definitely get bigger. Alright, I'm gonna give that a quick stir. And that is salted water as well. I always pour some salt in my water to season the noodles. All right, so now I'm just gonna work on cutting up my peppers, onion, and garlic, and then the ham, and get them in the pan to start sauteing them. All right, so I have some butter and olive oil in a pan, um, getting melted in there. And I got my, my peppers, I just, I seed them, cut them in slices, and then I'm gonna just cut in chunks they don't have to be even. I don't want them too small. All right. Okay, so we're going to put these in the pan. Get those going. I'm going to throw my onion in. Just a little bit of garlic. I do love garlic, but I don't want it to be overpowering by any means. Not for mac and cheese. Minced up pretty good and small. Okay. It's just on medium heat, you're just looking for a nice caramelized. I'm not trying to burn them or crisp them or anything, but just give them a little caramelization so they taste better. Okay, that's already starting to smell delicious and caramelized, so while that's going on, 
I am going to start cutting this uh, ham here, this ham steak. I don't want the fat, and I don't want the skin on the outside either, so I'm just going to make chunks of that meat. I'm not going to be shy with the chunks either. The dogs or chickens will love that meat. So the onions and peppers are at a good stage. Now I'm going to add the ham, which is cold, so it's going to stop the cooking a little bit. You don't want to burn your garlic. Burnt garlic does not taste good. So, I'm going to let this get a little bit cooked as far as the ham, a little bit caramelized. While this is getting cooked the rest of the way, I'm going to start on the cheese sauce, the most important part. So in this pan, I have some butter. This is a whole stick of butter. If you guys notice, I don't have a recipe. I'm just kind of throwing things together. Oh, and by the way, I, I did drain my, my noodles, so they are ready. I just put a little bit of butter in there so that they don't stick well while I'm waiting. Make sure they're al dente, which means just, you know, you don't want soggy noodles because these are going to also cook in the oven and soak up some of this sauce. So... Here's the butter, the whole stick. I don't know how much flour. That was about a tablespoon. That's probably about a tablespoon and a half. Let's call it, really, let's call that four tablespoons. And turn that down a little. We don't want the butter boiling. We're just going to make the roux. This is what's going to actually thicken the sauce. I don't want a real, real thick sauce because I want it a little bit, not runny, but, but I definitely don't want it thick so that when you bake it, the noodles absorb some of that. If it's too thick, that doesn't really happen. I'm going to add a little more flour. Okay, so we're going to cook this here for a minute. Make sure that flour isn't raw. Gives it kind of a nutty flavor when you cook it, that butter and flour. Now I'm going to add the milk. Now, as most of you know, I'm not milking my goats right now, which is very sad that I don't have goat's milk to add into this. Yes, I have frozen goat's milk, but that's for my soap making. So, just a little at a time. See it get thick. Add a little more. You don't want lumps. Okay, now we warm that. Okay, I'm going to stir this real quick. Salt and pepper, my sauce here, or the roux. This is going to be. This is the cream sauce. So once this boils again, I'll be able to see the thickness of it. Again, I'm not good on measuring anything. I just eyeball everything. Put a little salt. 
some pepper, which of course can't go wrong with. True guys, pepper, pepper. Pepper, pepper. Okay, we'll wait till that gets back up to a boil a little bit and see the thickness. Alright, you guys see how thick that is? Consistency of like a white gravy. That's how thick I want it once I add the cheese. So I'm going to add more milk. You want it pretty thin when you add the cheese. The cheese really thickens it up. I'm going to go for a little more here. Alright, we'll let that boil and see what it does. So this is part of like winging it and just seeing the consistency as it comes. Not really measuring anything guys. Put in what you like, whatever whatever suits your fancy, whatever taste you like, you know, add it in. Um, really, really easy recipe as far as homemade cheese is concerned. But the sauce is, is really important. You want to make sure it's not really a thick sauce before you add your cheese because it just won't be able to, the, the noodles aren't going to be able to soak up that cheese when you bake it. Okay, so that is nice and thin. Let me get a spoon and show you guys. It's boiling, it's good, that's as thick as it'll get. So I want it a thin consistency so that when I add the cheese, it will be good. Okay, so I had a three pound um, block of cheese and I used a third of it. So this is about a pound of cheese, I just grated up. I'm going to add it in here, but not all at once, so about half, get it in there melting, the other half. That smells so good. I did turn my burner off once I added the cheese because it's boiling and hot enough. Okay. That is the cheese sauce. You see how it thickened up? Which is good. So you gotta taste it. You don't ever add too much salt at first because, especially if you have a sharp cheese, which this was a pretty sharp cheese, I didn't want it salty.
Okay, now's where we add it all together. Alright, so I had to put the noodles in a bigger bowl so that I could stir it all together. Just gonna See, it's not super thick. We want it to be that consistency so that when you bake it, it's not dry with the final outcome. I have to say, that's one of the worst sounds in the world, but whatever. It's worth it. We are going to pour it in a baking dish and put some more cheese on it. Alright, so now we're just going to pour it in this baking dish. Ah! Noodle down. This is about a quarter cup of cheese. Well, not shredded. Quarter pound of cheese, rather. And I'm just going to sprinkle it on the top. homemade mac and cheese. Again, whatever variation you guys want to use, whatever you like food-wise with your macaroni and cheese, throw it on in there. It's, you know, very versatile. This, um, I'm excited about this cheese because it will be our first homemade mac and cheese, actually, that we take to a family gathering, Thanksgiving, that is my homemade cheese. So, pretty excited about that. But, that's what you do guys, so what I'm going to do after this, I'm going to, for tonight I'm going to foil it and in the morning I'm going to put it, because I'm going over to my mom's for Thanksgiving, so I'll put this in her oven. If you put it directly into the oven, I would say 15-20 minutes, just to give it that nice golden top. Um, if you put it in the fridge and are going to do it in the morning, I would say 30 to 40 minutes, but keep an eye on it. So uh, we will show a picture of at least the outcome of what it looks like when we take it out of the oven. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope all of you have a wonderful Thanksgiving and enjoy your families and have really good food. Use lots of butter in your recipes. See you again soon.